Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my first impressions plus on feet video of the brand new laceless Adidas A16 Plus Pure Control. Now inside the box, they do include a couple of extras to go along with the shoes themselves. The first extra is a set of comfort insoles to go along with the thinner lightweight ones already inside of the shoes. Uh, this is something we used to see a lot from Adidas, not so much anymore. But what's kind of funny about this is it still has the F50 Adi Zero branding in the little kind of packaging band to keep the insoles together. But obviously they are pure control branded insoles. Uh, they also include a shoehorn given that this shoe is laceless. It can be a little bit tricky to put on. So this kind of facilitates the whole process. And I'll be kind of showing you guys how this works a little bit later in the video. And they also include a string bag to go along with the shoes themselves. The string bag is is a black mesh material with black strings. You're gonna find the Adidas logo and the Ace logo there on the front in white. You can see it's stitched down the middle, so you have two separate compartments, which is kind of a cool little idea. And then at the bottom corner, it actually says, the color treatment will begin to wear off over time with use, and that is in reference to the actual coloring on the sole plate, something we'll talk more about a little bit later in the video. Not sure why they included that on the string bag. Other than that, all you'll find inside the box are, of course, the shoes themselves. So we'll get these guys out of the box really quickly, and we'll take a closer look at what is a very interesting brand new release from Adidas, the Laceless A16 Plus Pure Control. So obviously, this shoe has seen quite a bit of attention since its initial unveiling in that it's a laceless shoe with a knitted upper something we haven't really seen before laceless has been done uh, but the combination of laceless with a prime knit upper is something that again we've never seen before so the concept is really interesting um, and we're kind of going to detail what it's all about in today's video what I will say right off the bat is while this looks like a pair of socks attached to a sole plate with some cleats it's far from that. It's much more complex. There's more layers that you don't necessarily see. And again, these are all details that I'm gonna be pointing out throughout this video. So if you are interested in learning more about the tech specs, the general performance, the way these things fit and feel on feet, the weight, again, pretty much every single little detail, please stick around, watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $300 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's talk about actually putting these things on because since they don't have any laces, you can't loosen them up, which does make it a little bit tricky, especially the first couple of times that you do it. So there are two main aspects of this shoe that I want you to keep in mind when you actually put these things on. They're gonna be better for you in the long run. The first thing you have to consider is that the back of the shoe, you don't wanna crush it. Um, a lot of people will just kind of slam the shoes on while they're standing up and crush the back part. That's not just for this shoe, but it goes for any shoe. Uh, because if you do that enough times, it's going to actually bend the back of the shoe in permanently and create kind of a bump or a lump in the liner that um, is going to be uncomfortable for you in the long run and you could potentially ruin your shoes, which obviously you don't want to do. That's why they include the shoehorn, which we're going to be using to put these things on. The second thing you have to keep in mind is that all the stretch in the upper is at this top part here where the laces would normally be. It's an elasticated material and it does have some stretch to it. So uh, what you don't really see in the pictures is that there's two layers of material. The top layer that you can actually see and then an internal layer that's actually a secondary tech fit support system. Something we're gonna be talking about in detail a little bit later in the video. So you have two layers of material here across the top of the foot that does have stretch to it, which is where you wanna apply the majority of the pressure when you're actually putting these on. So essentially what you wanna do is either be sitting in the chair or sitting on the ground like I am right now. You wanna grab your um, uh, shoehorn that they include obviously with the shoes. You wanna slip it into the heel. From here with your left hand, this is a two hand job by the way, you wanna grab the lace loop here at the front and then with your opposite finger, on the other hand, you wanna grab the lace loop at the back and then kind of hold the shoehorn in place with your thumb. From there, you wanna kind of slide your foot in. And then now that you've kind of gotten your foot right here, the back of my heel is resting against the shoehorn. From there, you kind of wanna pull on both of the lace loops and just kind of slide your foot in. From there, the shoehorn is in place. You can remove your fingers and basically just pull the shoehorn out and you're pretty much good to do, good to go. From there, you just kind of have to fix the collar around the top here. And then you also want to pull up on this little tongue here so you don't have any extra material bunching up across the top of your foot. 
Once you've done all that, you are good to go. The shoes are pretty much ready. There's no laces to tie. That's the process. Next, let's talk about how these things actually fit and feel on feet. Now, like I mentioned at the start of the video, they look like socks with cleats. Uh, and when you actually put them on for the first time, I think a lot of people will be surprised at how stiff they actually are. The sides of the upper are very stiff. The heel is very stiff. And not to say that it's uncomfortable, because it isn't, it just doesn't feel like it looks, if that makes any sense. Now, with a laceless shoe, and really these remind me a lot of the previous laceless Lotto Zero Gravity models. This is not the first laceless shoe ever, by the way. I wore quite a few different models of the Lotto Zero Gravity, which never really caught on, but that's Lotto, this is Adidas. This will definitely be a little bit more popular. Um, but the general type of feel remains the same given that this does share the same laceless concept despite it being a knitted upper as opposed to a regular synthetic material. So with a laceless shoe, when you eliminate laces, what laces actually do in the first place is kind of hold everything together. The reason why you tie your laces is to pull the sides of the shoe together and then when you tie that knot, everything is held in place. So you're kind of determining the tightness of the shoe as well as how much it's actually going to grab your foot. With a laceless shoe, you don't have that because there aren't any laces. So the parts of the upper that are structured and fit tighter on your foot are in different spots than a traditional laced soccer shoe. So with a laceless shoe and with this shoe as well, what you're gonna find is that the top of the foot where there aren't any laces, that's the part of the foot that's actually going to be a little bit more loose. Um, it's kind of the opposite of a laced up shoe. So if you're one of those people that likes that super tight fit when you pull the laces uh, really, really tight, you just don't get that from this particular shoe. It's not to say that these things feel loose in any way, but it doesn't have that super snug fit across the top of the foot. It's definitely a little bit more loose, which is kind of an unusual sensation at first. What's interesting as well is that you're gonna find a lot of stiffness on the lateral and medial side of the midfoot. That's where all the structure has to be in the actual upper because it's not being provided by laces. So like I said, despite this looking like a sock, despite it having a knitted upper, at least in terms of what you can actually see, there's a lot of extra layers, there's a lot of extra structure that makes this shoe pretty stiff from right out of the box. Same thing goes for the heel. It's a fairly stiff heel and it's not really a mid-cut shoe despite how it may look. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video as well. Um, but again, you don't have laces to necessarily lock your heel down um, as effectively as a laced shoe would be able to provide. Uh, so unless these things fit you absolutely perfect, you could potentially run into issues. And that is the next thing that I really wanna talk about with these shoes in regards to fit is that you cannot buy these with growing room. You have to buy them so they fit you absolutely perfect. If there's extra space at the toe, if there's extra space at all, you're gonna have heel slippage issues, you're gonna have stability issues, you're just gonna have problems in general. This is not a shoe that you can adjust the tightness of. Once it's on your foot, that's how it's going to fit. So just keep that in mind. If you pick these up, buy them with no extra space whatsoever. As far as the overall shape and width of the shoe is concerned, it is tighter in the heel, tighter in the midfoot area, actually pretty tight in the midfoot area, and then it has a little bit more wiggle room in the forefoot and toe box area, but for the most part, it is a tighter fitting shoe. So if you have really wide feet, this is not a good shoe for you to pick up at all. And in regards to stretching, it is a knitted upper. It does have a lot of layers. I can see it giving ever so slightly, but for the most part, the way the shoe fits from right out of the box is the way it's going to fit for its entire lifespan. And I guess Adidas would kind of plan for that as well because you want it to maintain the same tightness that you have from brand new, given that again, it doesn't have any laces. As far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size nine US here and the fit and length is perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair, I would strongly recommend going true to size, but again, Keep in mind, this is not a pair of shoes that you wanna buy with extra growing room. They have to fit you with pretty much no extra space at all in order for this laceless system to work. If you have too much room, you're gonna have a lot of issues with this particular shoe. Next, I wanna go over all the tech specs, take a very detailed look at all the different elements on this shoe and basically share all the performance features that you should know about these if you were at all considering them. Now, before we get into that, I wanna talk about the laceless concept in general because a lot of Adidas' marketing would suggest that eliminating the laces on this particular shoe offers a major performance benefit. And the simple truth to that is there is no performance advantage to eliminating laces. Now, 
If you guys watched my video where I initially shared my thoughts on this particular shoe when it was first unveiled, a lot of people viewed that as kind of a negative outlook on this particular design, but it really has nothing to do with this design. It's just the laceless concept in general. When you eliminate the laces, you, yes, are eliminating the laces, which is some bulk across the top of your foot. But in the case of this shoe, I would argue that there's actually more bulk across the top of your foot. And with any laceless shoe, you're losing one key element that's very, very important in my opinion when it comes to a pair of soccer shoes. And that word or that thing is adjustability. Uh, anybody who's ever had a brand new pair of shoes, I'm sure you've gone out there, worn them for the first time and then decided, you know what, I think I might like them to be a little bit tighter or I might like them to be a little bit looser. The laces allow you to adjust how the shoe fits and you can uh, really have a pretty wide range of adjustment with shoelaces. They also help to lock everything in place. And again, shoelaces have been around and will continue to be around for a very, very long time. With a laceless shoe, including this one, you don't have adjustability. Once you put this shoe on your foot, the way it fits is the way it fits. You can't make it tighter, you can't make it looser, you can't modify the shape in any way. You just kind of have to live with how it is. So if the shoes don't fit you properly, if you're having some kind of discomfort due to the tightness or looseness of the shoe on your foot, you're kind of out of luck because you can't change it in any way at all. So that really makes, uh, like I said, the fit of the shoe extremely important. If you buy these things, it's super, super, super important that you buy them with the proper fit where they fit very snug with pretty much no extra space at the end of the shoe, just so you don't have any issues with heel slippage. And uh, as long as the shoe isn't uh, kind of too narrow or too wide, I suppose, you should be able to achieve a pretty good fit. But again, just keep in mind that you're not able to adjust the fit in any way. Once they're on your feet, if you don't like how they feel, that's how they're gonna to continue to feel for their entire lifespan. You cannot adjust them at all. So in the case of eliminating the laces on this particular shoe, yes, there aren't any laces here. You're left with what looks to be a completely smooth surface, which it is. It's a knitted prime knit material that's slightly elasticated. Pretty much the exact same material you'll find across the top of the foot on a pair of Magista Obras, Superfly 4s, or even the Nike Hypervenom Phantom 2. With that being said, you don't just have this single layer of material, which is something that Adidas doesn't really highlight in their marketing material. Uh, so you have what is a, a fairly thin layer of a prime knit, um, again, pretty much the same thickness as what you'll find from a Superfly or Obra. And then underneath that, you have a second layer of material, which is the secondary internal tech fit support system, which I can't really show you very well on this particular shoe, just because you can't exactly open it up. I think you can kind of see it there. There is a second layer of material there and that's why once you put these on you want to pull this up so it kind of pulls everything into place so you don't have any clumps or lumps across the top of the foot here. But it's a very similar system to what we have right now available on the Adidas X15 Plus Prime Knit which is basically this. It's kind of a uh, a wraparound piece that's on the inside of the shoe uh, that kind of holds your foot in place. But obviously this has extra reinforcement on the sides to just make it more stable without the laces. This does have laces, that doesn't of course. So that's kind of how the top of the shoe works. So you have two layers directly across the top of the foot where the laces have been eliminated, but is that actually less bulk? No, you actually have a good amount of thickness across the top of the foot just because of the two layers of material. So if you were thinking that this is a thin shoe, it isn't, it actually is not necessarily thick. It doesn't have a padded feel, but it's a very firm sensation across the entire foot aside from this particular spot right here where it's just a softer material, an elasticated material in general. The rest of the shoe is comprised of various different layers and is stiffer than you might expect based on how it looks. So we'll start at the top layer and then work our way inside. So the very top layer on this shoe on the lateral side are the Adidas stripes here. So you can see the actual Adidas stripes which just looks like the branding, but it actually is a main support element on this particular shoe. It's the stiffest part of the upper, which you'll immediately notice when you put these on your feet. And then in between the stripes, as you guys can see, there are this kind of crisscross pattern with more of this basically thin plastic material that's sitting on the outside. It has some like good kind of hardness to it. And this is again, gonna pre create that lateral support, the structural integrity of the upper that laces would normally be providing. So. You have that as your top layer. Then underneath that, you have your polyurethane layer, which sits on top of the prime knit. Obviously beneath that, you actually do have the prime knit knitted upper. 
which uh, is obviously what you see across the entire shoe. Um, it's a different weave, it's more loose through the middle and then obviously tighter along the outside and kind of the more high stress areas. Uh, so the pattern does switch up depending on what part of the shoe you are looking at. And then underneath that, you're actually going to find an internal microfiber liner that spans the entire inside of the shoe. So this adds a lot of stiffness. You can see when I push it in, it doesn't necessarily kind of fall into itself like a knitted upper wood. This doesn't have that same microfiber liner and it's just more plush. You can see how it kind of ripples when I push it in. This is kind of like a harder synthetic underneath. So it doesn't have that same ripple effect. And like I said, it doesn't have that soft sock like sensation that you might expect based on how the shoe actually looks. This is definitely a firmer, more dense synthetic material as opposed to a soft knitted upper. So again, it's not really the fault of the material itself. It's just what Adidas needed to do in order to make this shoe feel structurally sound when on your foot, make it responsive enough, which I think it will be given that you get the proper fit. But even so, it still isn't going to be as responsive as it could be if the shoe just had laces to help lock everything in place that much more firmly. So. That's kind of how the upper is. Uh, you're gonna find that the back of the shoe has an unusual cut, kind of looks a little bit unusual. It is the, uh, what they call their prime cut collar. And this is kind of just an answer to uh, Nike, Nike's uh, mid cut models, their dynamic fit collar that you see, of course, on the Phantom 2, the Superfly 4, and the Obra. Does it serve any purpose? The answer to that question is no. You could even see during the on-feet portion of the video, if you missed it, go ahead and kind of scroll back in the video and check it out. It doesn't actually wrap, this part of this opening does not wrap your ankle all the way around. It's kind of just a little extension piece that just looks mid cut, but really doesn't serve any purpose at all. Um, there's gonna be little spaces there. It's not gonna fit anybody perfectly unless you have an absolutely massive ankle. Um, it's kind of just like I said, a little extension uh, kind of almost decoration piece along the top edge that just extends it a little bit higher. But again, no structural integrity, no actual support or any performance benefit to the slightly extended cut where it's kind of straight across the top, uh, obviously lower than what a, a mid cut model from Nike would be. Um, the back of the shoe does have kind of some hardness to it. Obviously you do have an external heel counter, which we'll get to in just a second. The inside of the shoe, features a smooth synthetic suede liner with some, some decent padding to what feels nice against your thumb, but when you actually put them on, um, it definitely does feel a lot harder and a lot stiffer than you might expect. And again, that's just based on how the shoe fits. Uh, the inside, the insole, uh, of course, they do include the comfort ones that I showed you at the start of the video, and then they include this lightweight one, which is almost the same thing. It's a little bit thinner, features a mesh liner on top, and then has perforations through the forefoot and midfoot area. Um, nothing too fancy, but it does get the job done based on what I can tell so far. And then of course you do have the sprint frame uh, sole plate, which kind of makes a return from Adidas. We haven't seen this for a little while now, um, at least since they kind of wiped out their entire lineup. It was actually um, something, it's, it's weird for them to bring back certain things. So if, to see the sprint frame back on this particular shoe is kind of unusual. I um, mean, it's pretty much got Almost the same design that we saw on the original F50 Addy Zero from 2010, which is kind of interesting. So you have this um, heel counter that uh, has a little bit more of a squarish design as opposed to being perfectly rounded on either side. And then it does have this little triangle pattern in there, which looks kind of cool. And then uh, it's basically just made from a similar type of plastic material, has some decent stiffness to it. Again, very reminiscent of what we saw from the 2010 F50. Uh, it's got the same kind of ridges running through the middle just to stiffen up the midfoot area. And then the layout of the stud pattern is pretty much identical as well, except instead of triangle studs, you now have conical studs. Uh, what's interesting about this particular stud pattern, as they're calling it their ground control 2.0 stud pattern, replacing the ACE 15.1 FGAG stud pattern, is that you'll notice that this is very different from the original ACE, but it's still FGAG. Um, which to me is just super unusual. This is a stud pattern that's been a firm ground only stud pattern for Adidas for how many years now? And all of a sudden they release it again in 2016 and now it's FGAG. For me, this is a stud pattern that will perform very well on firm natural grass, but it is not an AG stud pattern. Can you use it on artificial grass? Adidas is saying you can, so I'm not stopping you, but I really don't think that this is a good choice if you're playing exclusively on artificial grass. It's pretty much just a straight up firm ground stud pattern that Adidas is saying you can use on artificial grass. So if you wanna do that, go for it. But otherwise I would recommend this personally as an, uh, a firm ground natural grass only stud pattern. But again, that's just what I have to say. Your opinion might be different. 
As far as the performance is concerned, it's all conical studs. It's a pretty straightforward layout. They're, they're fairly narrow in profile, so they'll dig into the ground quite nicely and provide decent bite despite their more traditional shape. But overall, again, it's, it's a proven layout from Adidas, regardless of what shape the studs actually are. So I expect the performance on firm natural grass to be very good. But on artificial grass, I think the studs are a little bit too long and you potentially may run into issues with stud pressure, just given how thin the actual sole plate is uh, with the sprint frame design kind of making a return. So just keep that in mind again, if you're planning on picking these up and using them on artificial grass fields. As far as weight is concerned, the A16 Plus Pure Control, I would say comes in at about average weight for a high-end soccer shoe nowadays. Not too light, not too heavy, kind of right there in the middle. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be weighing them for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind, this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 8.1 ounces the equivalent of 229 grams, which essentially is the exact same weight as the current synthetic Adidas X 15.1, which again, is not a super light shoe, it's not a heavy shoe, it's kind of right there in the middle. The shoe feels light on your feet, it obviously has a very unique fit to it, and it's fairly solid in terms of the overall weight. That's the best way to describe it. It does have an F50 Adi Zero sprint frame, something reminiscent of what we used to see from the F50 line, but they certainly aren't as lightweight as previous F50 models. Are there lighter shoes out there? Yes, but I think the main reason why most people will be buying these in the first place is to try out that laceless system, not because they're eight ounces. As far as aesthetics go, I'm still kind of undecided on the A16 Plus Pure Control. Uh, on one note, it's kind of cool looking in that it almost looks like a concept shoe, but at the same time, given that it does have that concept shoe look, it almost looks like an unfinished product, something that I really didn't realize until I actually had the shoes in my hands is that you have the Adidas branding on the one side and then the medial side is completely blank, which again, just looks a little bit strange to me. Um, and actually the shape of the shoe, a lot of the pictures that you'll see online have the shoe with this kind of perfect shape to it. And in person, you can see it's a lot bulkier across the top of the foot than you perhaps might expect. So it doesn't have that same kind of super sleek, streamlined aesthetic that you will see in a lot of the press release pictures from Adidas. So keep that in mind. This of course is the launch colorway and I expect to see more colorways down the line, given that this is a shoe that they're gonna continue on with. This is not a limited edition release. Uh, it features a solar green upper, which essentially is just a lime green color across the entire upper. It also features a combination of kind of like a lighter yellow color um, which you can very clearly see across the laceless part, the top of the foot, um, with the part that's not covered in that polyurethane covering. Um, and the same thing around the collar area. The collar area and the, just the general cut of the shoe is kind of unusual as well. People kind of had mixed feelings on the mid-cut models from Nike when they first came out. I think they'll continue to have mixed feelings about this cut as well. Similar concept, just kind of a little different look, I suppose. Um, I like the little design they have in the Adidas stripes that start from like a dark gray and then eventually transition into a solid black. Um, you have obviously the little bit of pink um, in the actual uh, pull tab and the actual TechFit collar on the inside or TechFit uh, support system is also pink in color and then you have a little bit of pink in the studs as well. Your Adidas branding on the back heel tab. And then of course you have the sprint frame which uh, accounts for the heel counter and the entire sole plate, which has this kind of anodized greenish yellow color to it. And that's what I saw, you guys saw at the start of the video, what printed on the bag is that the finish on the sole plate actually will wear off over time. I actually removed it prior to making this video. They include this little sticker on the bottom of the sole plate that says the chrome coating on the bottom of the shoe will wear off during play, but will not affect the performance of this product. Essentially what that means is that the nice shininess that you see right now potentially or will actually wear off as you wear them. The more you wear them, the more it'll wear off. I'm not sure what color it will be after the fact. I'm assuming it'll still be green, but just not as shiny. Um, I'll do a follow-up video on that for those of you that might be interested. Um, but again, just something to keep in mind. Uh, we see something similar from Nike with the Hypervenom Phantom 2 and the graphic that wears off on the bottom of that shoe. Same thing from Under Armour with a similar kind of anodized chrome look to the sole plate that we're seeing here. So something to keep in mind, uh, again, the bottom of the shoe, how it looks, that's not super important to me, might be to you. Um, so again, just 
kind of keep that in mind if you were planning on picking these up. But overall, it's a very interesting looking shoe. I'm still not completely sold on the design, but let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to my final thoughts. All right, guys, that is it for my first impressions of the laceless Adidas A16 Plus Pure Control. I'm really excited to try these things out. It's a really cool concept and they feel better than I thought they would if I'm completely honest with you guys. But I really wanna stress with this video that this is not for everybody. The reason why the video was so long is because I really wanted to go into great detail on every single aspect of this shoe, from the tech specs, the way it fits, how you need them to fit should you actually purchase a pair, because again, I can't stress this more, sizing is super, super important. You cannot buy these with extra growing room. So again, just make sure you kind of know what you're getting into, do your research prior to just picking up a pair of these things, because I don't want anybody buying them, spending $300 and then running to issues that they won't be able to fix because the shoe doesn't have any laces it's not adjustable so expect to see more follow-up content on this shoe in the very near future on my channel if you guys have any specific questions that you perhaps would like to see answered in video form leave those down below in the comment section i'll see what you guys have as far as suggestions go if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself be sure to check out the review page on my website that'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $300 retail price. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comments, and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.